Azure DevOps is a complete DevOps solution offered by Microsoft. And in this video, we're going to explore what it looks like. We're going to take a look at the offerings. It has boards, it's got uh, repos, it's got pipelines, lots of good stuff all in one place. We're also going to deploy a Python Flask application into Azure's app service, all of that using pipelines. Hi, my name is Sam Gabriel, and let's do it. All right, so we are in Azure DevOps, as you can see here. And uh, before we get into Azure DevOps, I want to show you my Azure console as well. So Azure console uh, is portal.azure.com right here. And Azure DevOps is dev.azure.com. All right. Now in Azure DevOps, we have, if we go to the very root of our tree here, we've got the ability to create organizations. And within an organization, we can create projects. So I have this organization called Tech and Aid, and I have a project called Weblog. Of course, you can create a new project, and it could be a public project or a private project. Inside the project, uh, you will see that we have a bunch of options. So we've got uh, this overview page here that pulls from my README in the repo, the main repo that I have in this project. So you can see that we've got uh, boards. In boards, we've got uh, what you can see here is, uh, you know, uh, working items. You can create epics. You can create issues and so on. We've got a nice Kanban. A board here and can create sprints and so on and then we've got repos and you can create multiple repos under the same project I only have one repo here and uh, to create a new repo you just click the plus uh, button here and then you can click new repo and uh, and go from here you can initialize a repo with a readme and also a dot git ignore file I already have a repo I've got my uh, files here for my application and uh, I even have a pipeline, um, Azure pipeline YAML file. If you're familiar with GitLab uh, or GitHub, or, or uh, everybody has a, um, a pipeline file. So it, this one is a YAML file here in Azure DevOps. We're going to get into this uh, later and the specifics of this particular pipeline, but uh, don't worry about it. We will cover that soon. Uh, next portion is the pipelines portion, and this is where we're going to generate a new pipeline and see a build and a deploy into Azure App Service. We've got also test plans and artifacts as well. Now, the first thing we want to do is go to project settings, and you can see here I've got the name of the project, and I also got the visibility. Now, I have the visibility here private, and this is because if you run public, uh, you're going to run into a couple of issues if you're running on the free tier with uh, the issue is with parallelism. So by default now, uh, Azure has put parallelism down to zero and you need to send in a request, a, a manual form request to increase the parallelism to at least one on the free tier. And uh, they don't allow public visibility now, so it has to be private to run parallelism and be able to run a pipeline. Now this is uh, a little bit annoying, but it's not that big of a deal uh, since I'm running this demo. And if you're gonna be running in your own organization, you're probably gonna have the license for that. So that shouldn't be an issue for you. Okay, uh, so I wanna show you also how to create a service connection, which is very important to connect to Azure. So create a service connection from here and select Azure Resource Manager and scroll to the bottom, click next, and I'll take service principle automatic, next. Now it's going to ask to log in to your uh, Azure account. All right, so I need to pull my password here. Okay. 
All right, looks like we're signed in. And we don't have a resource group yet. So why don't we go ahead and create th uh, that resource group? So if you go into my Azure uh, screen here, and you can see there are no resource groups. So I can create one from here, or better yet, I'm going to show you how to do this through Visual Studio Code. In Visual Studio Code, there is a very cool uh, plugin here, so or extension. If you go to Extensions and type Azure, uh, the first one that comes up is Azure Tools. I already have it installed. You can install this one. It's very neat, and I'll show you exactly what it looks like. So with this extension, you can see that I've already connected to Azure. If this is your first time with the extension, it's going to ask you to connect with your credentials. So it will pull out a new browser window and you can uh, you can follow the instructions there. But what I can do is I can create a new app service web app. So if you click here, I'm going to call this TechAnade web app. Hit enter. It has to be a global unique uh, name. I'm going to I'm going to use Python 3.9 for this app and I'm going to use a free tier for uh, this app. Okay, so that will take some time. You can see the activity log at the bottom here. It's going to create our web app for us. And once it's, it's completed, it's four out of six here, uh, we'll go into the Azure um, uh, console or portal to, to see that it's been created successfully. Of course, you can create it through the UI or you can create it through the Azure CLI as well. And looks like it failed. Let's see why. Uh, please contact support for issue for app service plan create operation is throttled interesting okay let's give it another try maybe I'm doing this too fast so they're throttling me so let's see well that continues let's go over here and refresh our, uh, our Azure portal and see what's going on okay so we've got our resource group let's see if there's anything inside of it that got created all right so nothing yet oh it failed again okay Let's see if we can create it manually from here. Uh, let's see, app service. Uh, where is it? Web app. And do I have the correct one? Let's just make sure. App services. Uh, this one. Okay, create an app service. Okay, Azure subscription. The resource group is this one that we just created through uh, Visual Studio Code. Uh, we're gonna name this TechAnade Web App. remember this has to be unique code select the runtime stack we want Python uh, 3.9 Linux East US is fine uh, Linux plan pricing plan is the free one okay so let's go ahead and move to deployment uh, let's review and create Okay, let's create. Okay, so creation in progress. Let's see when this is complete. All right, seems like it has completed successfully. That's great. So we can go back to uh, Visual Studio Code here and go in here and refresh. Uh, resources uh, 
uh, we can we can uh, group our resources by resource type or by resource group uh, either way we still need to get this to refresh well actually while we wait for this to refresh we can go ahead now and set up our um, new Azure service connection so create a service connection once again Azure resource manager next next and now we can pull our subscription here successful and uh, our resource group is this one uh, service connection name I'm gonna call this Sam service connection save and that should create our service connection for us and give it a second while we come back here and check on our resources Okay. seems like it hasn't synced yet but that's fine we have our service connection now connected and we can go ahead and create a pipeline so uh, we're gonna create this pipeline and we just click create pipeline pretty st straightforward and select Azure repos git now you can connect to Bitbucket github github enterprise other git versions but we are using Azure repos and it's nicely connected here so it sees it and it automatically pulls our Azure Pipelines YAML file and let's go ahead and click uh, run so this is going to run our pipeline for us once again that's already predefined and we'll take a look at what that looks like in just a second let's see if this finished syncing okay it did so perfect now we have our app services. We can see our Tech and Aid web app is right here. Uh, and once again, I like to group by resource group. It just makes a little bit more sense in my mind. I've got my resource group, I've got my uh, web app. Now, what we created here is really a shell for our application. It's not the actual application. What's happening with the pipeline is it's right now deploying the pipeline and it seems like it's queued. Oh yeah, if it's this is your first time you're running the pipeline, um, through a YAML file, you need to accept the permissions here and permit this to run. Okay, so this should take a few seconds and it will start uh, running very soon. Okay, so this is a pipeline that has two jobs, the build and test job and the deploy to Azure Web App Service job. So while this runs, I'm going to show you what this looks like over here back to my folder I've got this hello app and in this hello app I have some static files some templates uh, views web app pi this is all the the actual files that run the web app um, and really what I want to point out is the Azure pipelines YAML so if you make this a bit bigger <clears throat> so we can follow along we can close this so the first thing is triggering on main so anytime I make a change inside this repo, it will trigger the pipeline to automatically run. Uh, this is the image that we're gonna run for this particular pipeline, Ubuntu latest. I have two jobs, as I mentioned. The first job is a build job. Uh, the display name is build and test, and I have a few steps. First is a task, use Python version, and I'm specifying version 3.9. I have a script here that installs or upgrades pip installs an upgrades pip and then installs my requirements.txt which is this file right here and uh, you can see it's just uh, installing flask and then i've got a another script that runs pytest and pytest is just running this uh, the test on this test file right here and after the pytest test i am running an archive files where I'm going to zip my uh, all these files and I'm gonna publish this as an artifact I call it drop and the path is right here this path here and these are variables inside of Azure DevOps that have specific specific meaning so artifact staging directory and the build ID as well so that uh, that's going to get published right here the next job is a deploy job so now that I've 
tested my Python application. I've uh, run it. I've uh, packaged it as a zip file. I've uploaded it as an artifact. Now we, we are going to deploy it into Azure Web App Service. Okay. So it depends on the build condition succeeded. And then here are some variables that we can define. The web app name is tech and aid web app and an artifact path is system artifacts direct um, directory and uh, download current. So we're downloading the actual files of the artifact called drop. Remember we called it drop over here. And then from here, we're deploying to Azure web services. So we have a bunch of inputs that are required for uh, Azure web or Azure web app services. So the connection name, that's the Azure subscription connection that we created. If you recall, SAM service connection that we created to connect into Azure. Then we have the app type is web app Linux. We're deploying a Linux application. The app name is the variable. So this is how we reference the variable web app name, which is tech and aid web app. Remember we created the shell and we called our application tech and aid web app. And then the package path is right here. So, this is where the artifact drop gets dropped, uh, literally. And from here, this is the uh, zip file that we called over here. And the deployment method is a zip deploy. And the startup command that we need to run to start up our application is this one over here. Now, let's go back to our pipeline and see what happened. I see that the build and test pipeline has succeeded, whereas the uh, deployment did not succeed. So let's see why that is. Uh, resource tech and aid web app doesn't exist. Resource should exist before deployment. Okay. Tech and aid web app doesn't exist. Maybe I uh, specified the wrong name here. So let's go back to home. <clears throat> and let's see all the resources that we have. Um, tech and aid web app let's see tech and aid web app tech and aid web app as a resource should exist okay all right so let's take a look and see what we are missing so really the two variables are these ones so it's going to be one of these that i made a mistake here so this one is correct. It might be that we got the service connection name wrong. SAM service connection. Let's go back and double check. So over here, go to project settings and take a look at service connections. SAM service connection. Let's see if this is correct. Yeah, it seems like it is correct. Okay. All right, so I uh, troubleshot this for a bit. And what I did is I went back and double checked the service connection. And uh, what uh, happened, I'll show you really quickly, is in the service connection, I deleted the service connection and created a new one. <clears throat> But you can see here that I removed the resource group. I had specified a particular resource group. I left it open. That allows you to use the subscription against multiple resource groups. But I also granted access permission to all pipelines. That's the only difference that I made. And that seems to be working well this time. So we're going back to our pipeline here. And I can see that it is in the process of deployment. So we are... Uh, deploying the build and test phase has succeeded and we are running right now in the deployment phase. So let's take a look uh, at the logs here. Okay, so downloaded our, uh, our artifact and now we're in the process of deployment. So we'll leave it for a few seconds, hopefully quickly it will be done oh there we go that's it so it has succeeded and we can go back to our deployment and see that uh, here's our link to our uh, our deployment and it takes a few seconds for it to load so we just got to be patient here but as you can see that we've got two jobs build and test deploy in Azure and in each step you have uh, in each job you have a bunch of steps 
uh, as you can see the download step is where we've downloaded our uh, artifact and here is where we've uploaded our artifact you can see uploaded the package here and uh, and then we grab it from the the second job the deploy job here okay so this should be available soon all right as the application uh, starts what we can do is show you how to use a badge so you might see something like this if you go to um, repo and you might see some repos have this is a badge right and this badge you can set it up so you can go to pipelines and it will tell you basically the success of your pipeline so if you see a green and it's successful red then it, had, it failed so what we can do is we go, go back to pipelines and go to the top uh, actually click on the pipeline the web log pipeline and click the three dots at the top and go to status badge and then you can see the image URL but grab the sample markdown copy that to clipboard and let's go back to our repo uh, and then we're gonna put it here but before we do that, let's do a couple of things. First, let's um, see why this is not coming up. It's been uh, more than a few minutes. There we go. So here's our application. It's up and running. You can see there's an, a home page, about page, um, and the contact page. Okay. So we're going to do a couple of things. We're going to put the badge on, and we're also going to update this. Uh, home page to just say version 2 here and redeploy the application so why don't we do that we're gonna do that straight from our Visual Studio Code IDE so we can go into our uh, readme file and under status you can actually just go ahead and paste our uh, code that we grabbed from the pipelines uh, view and then from here, we want to go to templates and let's update our home template and say home page for the Visual Studio Code class tutorial. Let's say this is version two of the app. And uh, this saves automatically, so I don't have to hit Control S every time. And now let's say deploying version two, for example. Let's commit that and sync that, and that will publish or um, push our uh, repo and we should see that our pipeline gets triggered automatically as you can see like that it's already running deploying version 2 that's the commit message that we put in so let's go in and take a quick look and I'll pause the video until this actually deploys and we'll come back and take a look all right, so it's successful. Let's go and take a look. Um, okay, everything is successful. If we refresh this page, there we go. We see this is version two of the app, perfect. And uh, if we go back to our repo, we should be able to see, there we go, our badge. It's uh, very nice, Azure Pipelines succeeded. We've done a great job. Um, this is basically a video that we discussed Azure DevOps, how to use it with a, an example Python Flask app, all the benefits of having everything in one place where you've got your, uh, your boards, your repos, your pipelines, uh, some test plans, artifacts, all in one place with Azure uh, DevOps, how we've linked it into Azure itself with the Azure App Service, and uh, how easy to put all of this together. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one.